All praises to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to everyone joining me on this program. This is the Fount of Israel's Bible Studies program, and as always, it's an honor for me to stand before you on the Lord's Holy Sabbath day. Now, I'm going to go ahead and give you the title, which is an attitude of gratitude, an attitude of gratitude. But before we get started, let me remind you to like, share, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. And don't forget to smash that notification bell because I do not want you to miss a single lesson. Check the description box down below. If you find it so generous in your heart to donate, please donate and support. Now, one of the best things for you to do is support the channel by subscribing. So what I ask you, I humbly ask you to give me four lessons. Just give me four Sabbath lessons to see if you like what I am teaching. After that, you're free to move on, but just give it four lessons to see if you are being edified. With that, we're going to go ahead and get with our lesson, which is an attitude of gratitude. This lesson is about being uh, thankful. It's about <clears throat> giving praise to the Most High. And I think it's time for us to do that because we get into our lives and we just go on the day to day type things, day to day type things. And we start to, to take for granted the things that the most high is doing for us. We just it's, it's like no big deal for us after some time. And I don't think that's very, very fair. Right. So you say sustaining our lives is waking us up in the morning and giving us breath, giving us the opportunity to work. If some of us actually work, that we have our utilities on, that we have a place to stay, that we even have food to eat that day. There's so many things for us to be thankful for. And I think we forget that these little things that we take for granted and that can be taken away. In fact, when, when, whenever we have had something taken away from us, something so small, you know, the old saying that you don't appreciate something until it's gone. So if we take away the hedges that the Most High have for us, all these things, all these seemingly inconsequential things that he does for us, then we will understand just how much he does for us every single day. Every single day. So with that, we're going to go ahead and get into our lesson. We're going to go to uh, Philippians, if you will. Go with me in Philippians and I'll be reading out of the King James. And when we get to Philippians, we're going to go out of uh, or start at chapter four. We just want two verses, six and seven. He said, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. You know, that's one of the things that we don't have a problem with. That's one of the things we don't forget. Supplication. Basically, what do you want? Our request. Right. That, that's what it is. It's what do you want? What's your request? We don't forget that. We, we, we never forget that. In fact, sometimes we act as though the most high is but a genie ready to make manifest our machinations and that is not the case brothers and sisters he's not a genie to serve us we are the servants who worship and praise him and i think we forget that we get that twisted sometimes we have to maintain an attitude of gratitude. He said, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, that, okay, is the gratitude. Let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We have to keep this in mind. Because if we don't maintain an attitude of gratitude, what then happens is through this perpetual act of.
this perpetual act of taking what he does for us for granted, at some point, it gets cut off. At some point, it stops. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians, go up about two books. 1 Thessalonians. We're going to go to chapter 5 in 1 Thessalonians. We're going to read 16 and 18. 16. Rejoice evermore and pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now, don't let someone say, uh, oh, well, he was just talking to the Thessalonians. Okay, to, 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 to the Thessalonians, excuse me. Oh, he was just talking to the Thessalonians in Thessal Thessalonica. See, this is a directive and he's talking to all of us. So when he says, you know, um, thou shalt not, what was he talking to? See, this is a guide for all of us. So thanksgiving in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going I'm, I'm to tell you why in everything. That's not placed there haphazardly. It's not. Because we should give thanks in just about everything. You guys, if you've been following the ministry for any length of time, you would know in some one of the other lessons I, I mentioned, you know, even when bad things happen, okay, even when those things happen, we should be thankful. Well, well that doesn't make uh, sense, teach. Well, it does make sense because it means that the Most High is still dealing with us. If he is still dealing with you, he's treating you like you're one of his. If he's dealing with you, then you still have access to the Holy Spirit, to the Ruach HaKodesh. And so if you have that, then you have strength and power to carry on, to keep going. Because what we have to understand is in this life, in this particular life, it's not a dress rehearsal. This is it. This is the show. The show of what? Character development. This is the show. This is the time where we bear fruit. This is a time where we're being thankful. This is the time where we're being molded and we're being sculpted, where we're learning or should be learning. This is that time. This is that life. So if he's still dealing with you and he's trying to get you back on a path and we veer off the path a little bit and then he has to chastise us and get us back on the path and then we veer off the path a little bit and he has to chastise us once again to get us back on the path, this is good, the part that he's dealing with us, not the part that we keep messing up. But should you mess up, we have to get up and keep moving forward. You're gonna fall down, you're gonna mess up. But you have to get up and keep moving forward. Repent and stay in that walk. That's what we have to do. The time is now. It is too late to change and to grow character when we're standing in front of our maker, when we're standing in front of Yeshua. It's too late to be, oh, well, I change now. Nay, nay. It doesn't work like that. So that, therefore, if that's true, then this, this is the time. But it's also the time for us to be thankful, to rejoice, to praise, to worship. Not e to have an attitude of gratitude. Join me over in 1 Corinthians 10. First Corinthians chapter 10. We're going to read 30 and 31. For if I by grace be a partaker, why am I, why am I evil spoken of for that for which I give thanks? Why well, say bad things about me I, for the things I give thanks? Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. 
The fact that you may eat today or have something to drink today, whatever it is, the glory goes to the most high. Then we see in Matthew, don't we see in the gospel where it says, you know, how he covers the lily of the fields and the birds have food and all this just just works. Works out because of his system. Works out because of his order. He even makes he even makes a way for us. He makes a way for us. And you do know there, no matter what you're going through, there's somebody who has it worse. You, you, you do realize that. You, it, it's, just, it's just me and you talking. It's just, just me and you. You do realize that no matter what you're going through, someone has it worse. And if that is true, if that is a true statement, then you ought to be thankful. You ought to be thankful. Go with me to Colossians. Colossians chapter two, four through seven. Colossians chapter two, four through seven. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet I'm with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Is I'm watching you, right? I mean, in the spirit, but, I, but I'm watching you. I got eyes on you, right? And ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Walk as he walked, do as he does. Do what he says. Be obedient. Verse 7. Rooted in, built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. See, if we know at the outset, when we come into the truth, I'm not talking about when, we, when you were in Sunday Christianity, when everything was just Pollyanna, everything was just perfect, right? No, 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 nay, nay. When you come into this truth, it's a little bit different, right? We let you know that there will be trials, there will be tribulations, but it's par for the course. We read where Paul said all the things that befell him, shipwrecked and robbed and in jailed and all that other stuff, right? We know what happened to many of the apostles. We know that, um, the death that came for a lot of the prophets. Doesn't mean that everything's gonna just be smooth and nice and soothing. That's what, that, that is not what life is for. We're being refined in the fire. And this is, if you're gonna be refined in the fire, this is the fire that you want to be refined in, hallelujah. This is the fire that you want to be tried because this is to develop us. This to get us right because he wants a particular type of person to be family with him, to be co-heirs with him in the kingdom. What kind of person you say? Righteous one, obedient servant, righteous. That's what he's looking for. So everything that you're going through is for your edification. It's to build you up. And you should be thankful for it. Because this is the type of heart he wants us to have. This is the type of attitude he wants us to have. Keep growing, keep going, and be thankful along the way. Let's go to Romans 5. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, and we're going to read 3 through 5. And it says, Not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patient. 
Pause to know, did I not mention that? Even if it's bad. And he's talking about things, even if it's bad and the attitude we should have, right? Even if it's bad to continue. Four, and patience, experience, and experience, hope. I'm talking about a blessed hope, right? And hope, make it not a shame because the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. So let's look at that one more time. Three. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation. You know, tribulation is not good, right? Matter of fact, let's take a look at it. Let's look at tribulation. Well, I'm gonna look at I'm gonna look at my strongs here. And we're gonna look up tribulation. Okay, let's see here. Let's go to tribulation let me open up my strong's bible real quick so romans 5 and 3 so i'm gonna hit on i'm gonna hit tribulation right here tribulation is the greek word the greek word 2347 thripsis a pressing, a pressing together pressure meta, metaphorically oppression affliction Tribulation, distress, straits, okay? Literally or figuratively, afflicted, anguish, burden, persecution, tribulation, and trouble. And after I'm reading that particular definition, he said, but we glory in tribulation also. Let's, let, let, let's, let's back up a little bit. Starting at verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Oh, that sounds nice. And I believe it. Don't get me wrong. I believe it. Don't get it, don't get it twisted. I, I, I believe that. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. But what it says in 3, 4. And five. And not only so, not just that, not just the rejoicing and hope and the grace and all that, but not only so, but we glory in tribulations also because we know, or it says, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. So with tribulation, we start to get patient. And patience experience and experience hope and hope make it not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us us. Notice how some people, uh, when bad things happen, um, they don't know how to handle it. They fall apart. They, 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 they lose it. But those who've been through something, who's been through the struggle, who had to grind it out, don't freak out quite as easy. Because they say, you know, I, I, I've, I've seen this before. So here's what we're going to do. Be thankful for that. Be thankful that he put that grit in you. Be thankful that he put that survival instinct. That he put that, as the scripture says, that patience in you. That's how you get your patience in tribulation. For those of us who came up pretty hard or uh, uh, came up in very, very poor neighborhood came up with uh, meager beginnings but those of us who have been hungry are homeless who those of us who know what that feels like that's how you get the patience see that's something that you would not have gotten otherwise so you don't get that through ease and quiet characters not developed through ease and quiet I remember there was a time, um, I believe in the late 90s, there was a time where we see like news reports, those who are born with a silver spoon in their mouth, maybe they're ultra rich, born super silver spoon in their mouth, and they lose everything and they want to delete themselves. See, this character is not made or developed in ease and quiet. See, they can't handle the pressure 
The character is not developed. They cannot go through tribulation. Because that's the door that we go through to get this particular kind of patience. And not everybody can handle that. You understand, brothers and sisters. If you're understanding what I'm saying, put a comment down below. Put a 100 in the comment section. If you understand what I'm saying. Let's continue. We're going to go to Psalm 104. Psalm 104, or Tehillim 104. Okay. Now, when we get to Psalm 104, I'm going to start at verse 15. Psalm 104, verse 15. And look at what, ha what, look what happens. Um, but you know what? No, I'm going to back it up. I'm going to go to 13. And it's talking about the most high, right? The most high. He watered the hills from his chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy works. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and the herb for the service of man. Uh, don't miss that. An herb for the service of man. That he may bring forth fruit out of the earth and wine that make it glad the heart of man and oil to make his face to shine and bring his strengthen man's heart in which uh, in bread sorry in bread which strengthens man's heart we got wine fruit and bread he has something to eat right and he says most high does this 16 the trees of the trees of the lord are full of sap and cedars of lebanon which he has planted which the most high hath planted where the birds make their nests as for the stork and the fir trees are her house. The high hills are a refuge for the wild goats and the rocks for the conies. He appointed the moons for seasons. The sun knoweth its going down. Thou makest darkness and it is night. Wherein all the beasts of the forest do creep forth. The young lions roar after their prey and seeketh their meat from God. The sun rises. They gather themselves together and they lay down in their dens man goes forth unto his work and to his labor until evening O lord how many for all thy works and wisdom hast thou made them all the earth is full of thy riches so is this great and wide sea whereas are things creeping innumerable both small and great beasts there go the ships there is that leviathan whom thou hast made to play therein these wait all upon thee, that thou mayest give them their meat in due season. That thou give it them, they gather, thou opens thy hand, they are filled with good. Look at all the things that he does for our good. How he takes care of everything. Everything. That's what that's what Yeshua was talking about, you know, uh, in the Gospels when he was saying, you know, if the Most High does all this, if the Father does all these things, don't he? He knows what you need as well, and he provides it. Should we be thankful for that? Should you and I have an attitude of gratitude for that? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Let's look at a couple of them. Look at the things he does like automatically, right? Look at what he does. He says, you know, it causes the grass to grow for the cattle, feeds the cattle, automatic, okay? Lion King, circle of life, right? Herbs for the service of man, that he bring forth food out of the earth, bring forth food out of the earth, your cabbage and your turnips and your collard greens, your spinach, your potatoes, your yams, all these things. Your yucama, your plantains, your fruits, vegetables, all these things for you and I. They just, 
started it. Now, of course, it's up to us to continue that cycle. And even in that, most of us don't even do that. We just go down to the store. But, you know, you get my point. But look at Look what happened. Look, look at what he does automatically. Should we not be thankful for that? And he said, and wine that make it glad the heart of man. Some men are really happy to have that wine. And oil to make his face to shine. I put oil on my face. I'll tell you that. And bread, food, which strengthens a man's heart. And it does. The trees of the Lord are full of sap. The cedars of Lebanon, which he has made planted. There are birds where the birds make their nests as for the stark, the fir trees are her house. The high hills are a refuge for the wild goats and the rocks for the conies. We've seen mountain goats, right? You've seen that before. We appointed the moon for seasons and that's what exactly what the moon does till this day. That's what the moon does till this day for a season. This is how we get our months. This is what the month is named after the moon. Talk about the word month. The sun knoweth it's going down. They just repeat on their circuit. The sun just repeats on us. It goes up. It comes up, comes down. Shines us, shines on us and then knows when to go down. It's all cyclical. It's automatic. Precision clockwork, if you will. Thou makest darkness and it is night, wherein all the beasts of the forest do creep forth. Yeah, they do. The young lions roar after their prey and seek their meat from God. Circle of life. Sun rises, arises, they gather themselves together and they lay down in their dens. And then what man goes forth unto his work? Wakes up in the morning, goes unto his work. And his labor until the evening, until the labor until that night. Yes, I know people have different schedules, but you guys get the point. This is you got to go back to a time where there wasn't much light at night. So typically they wanted to be done working before it got dark. And we still do that for the most part today. We have a lot to be thankful for. The mundane things we don't give a second thought to. We have a lot to be thankful for. I remember back in the day, before I was in the truth, and I'm just a little kid, and we used to what? At, at Thanksgiving, go around the table and say what you are thankful for. All right. And at the time when I was younger, you know, young, self or self-centered, things like that. I didn't want to do it. My mom's like, hey, you know what? Let's talk about what what we're thankful for and all that. OK. And <laughs> I had my own vociferous remonstrance to doing it, but I complied anyway, even though I didn't want to do it. But I complied anyway. Oh, I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for that. Try to make up some things. Right. Didn't really, I mean, I understand it's not really the holiday to celebrate. Totally means something else. But the idea of being thankful is important. So I get it. I get it. But we're going to continue. Let's, let's, let's keep pushing forward. We're going to go to Psalm. Let's see. We're at 104. Psalm 7. Let's go to seven. Psalm seven. We're gonna go to Psalm seven. I really just want one verse when we get there. Psalm chapter seven. And we want one verse when I get there. I'm going to read verse 17. 17 says, and I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness, and I will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. I will praise him, and I will sing praises to the Lord Most High. Be thankful. This is part of being thankful. This is part of it, singing his praises. Showing, this is part of having that gratitude in us. It's part of that. We go to verse 9, chapter 9, I should say. 
Chapter 9. We're still in the Psalms. Chapter 9. Let's go at verse 1. What does it say? I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart, and I will show forth all thy marvelous works. Everything. Everything. Show forth this marvelous work. Everything that is done for us. When I was teaching this in front of a class, one of the things, one of the demonstrations I did was uh, there were some uh, books on the table and it just represents everything that you're thankful for. Right. It's just just take that. Right. So look at your table right now and whatever's on that table, just pretend like it represents something. And then piece by piece, one by one, remove something from that table and just say thank you, right? You remove something else, thank you. You remove something else, thank you, until that table is clear. And you'll notice you just made room to receive more when you look at that empty table. And everything that's in your hand or that you sat down that you're thankful for. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. Thank you for this. Praising his name. And all of a sudden, you just made room. That's what having an attitude of gratitude is all about. It's making room for more. Part of it, anyway. We're going to keep going. We're still in the psalm, but let's go to 69. Chapter 69. I just want one verse there as well. 30. And I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with what? Thanksgiving and magnify him with thanksgiving. That's one of the things that I admired about King Dawid, King David. That's one of the things that I admire because if we just read the Psalms, we kind of know his heart. We kind of know his attitude as much as people want to kick against the fact that, OK, he messed up. I don't necessarily zero in on that. I understand that none of our forefathers and none of the prophets were, you know, exactly perfect. But I do like the attitude of David. And I think it's a, 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 a cautionary tale to let us know that, hey, you know what? He did mess up. We mess up as well. But look at the heart that he has. And you can see that demonstrated through his writings of the Psalms. Because if he's a man after God's own heart, then we have a lot to learn. We have a lot to learn. And one of the things you did learn, if you read some of these songs, is that he was very, very thankful of everything that the Most High did for him. He praised him in song. He worshiped him. He honored him. So much so that he was a man after God's own heart. Can we learn something if we have this attitude? Can we learn something about having this attitude of gratitude? Is there something to be gained from that? I'm sure you guys will agree. There is indeed something to be gained from that. Join me in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, and we're going to go to chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. There's another reason to be thankful. He, 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 the, the, Yeshua died for you and I. He died for his people so that we can inherit this kingdom, so that we can gain access, so that we can get immortality, so that we can commune with the Father and the Son because it will be the light thereof, so that we can partake in the tree of life, so that we can witness the healing of the nations. So that we can see new Jerusalem, the heaven and the new earth and new Jerusalem descending down so that we can live in a constant state of immortality or everlasting life. 
so that we can experience no more pain, no more suffering, no more tears because he's going to dry all of our eyes. You mean to tell me you don't have anything to be thankful for? Is that what you're telling me? I could go on, but you got, you got to help me out. Are you telling me you have nothing to be thankful for? And for those who get it, I want your faith to be strengthened in this. If you think about what I just named, that is the hope that is within you. That is to reassure you. That is to comfort you and let you know that you're not doing this for nothing. You're not walking this walk for nothing. There is something at the end of this. Your pain, your anger, your vexation, your distress, your tribulation that you've gone through in your life. The ups, the downs, the highs, the lows, the suffering, the sacrifice. It's for a reason. You do get a reward. And it's okay. He says, behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. So we all get an opportunity. We all get an opportunity. And all we have to do for this opportunity is be thankful. That's it. Be thankful. We're going to keep going. Now we're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Second Corinthians chapter 4. I'm going to start at verse 15. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace through might, through the thanksgiving of many, redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but through our outward man, though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. This is the hope that I'm trying to get you guys to understand. 17. For our light affliction which is but for a moment working for us a far more exceeding and ex eternal weight of glory. What did I just say? All the things that you're going through right now. I know it seems bad. I get it. I get it. But it's still a light affliction compared to what you get, compared to your reward. Trust me, brothers and sisters, if the reward was not that good, then it wouldn't be worth going through what you're going through. But we know it is that good. It's that good. It's worth it. It describes everything that we're going through, but a light affliction. 17, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, because we, what, what, we were averaging 80 years, right? We're averaging, what, 80 years? For our light affliction, which is but a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal or temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And that's what we're going for here. Through our attitude of gratitude, we're thankful that we have the opportunity to take hold of the unseen, to tap into the eternal in that resurrection. 
You think you have something to be thankful for? Let's continue. Let's go to James. James 1 and 1. James 1 and 1. We're going to read the first couple of verses. First few. He says, What a J uh, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting, my brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of our faith worketh what? Patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. Now, upbraid it to revile, to really get on your case, basically, right? To kind of just, yeah, no. It, but it, it upbraid it not, right? That he's not going to do that. He's not going to do that, right? He's not going to do that. Okay? But what he says, he says, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. And it says, what well, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Be grateful. You can ask the fact that we are able to ask the most high for wisdom for counsel, through the prompting of the Holy Spirit to deliver us answers or maybe a phone call, maybe a teacher, an elder, or maybe an answer directly from him, maybe a dream or a, 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 just this, this, this feeling, this, this, this unction, this still small voice. The mere fact that he can communicate with us through a myriad of ways we have that access brothers and sisters we have so much to be thankful for so much let's go back to the psalms this time we can go to 106 guys if you're following what i'm saying if you're understanding what I am saying, let me hear you in the comment section down below. 106. Psalm 106. And from there, we're going to read verse 47. Now, now we're going to get into... Now, we're talking about the common everyday things, the things that may seem mundane, inert, that we don't even think twice about. Seems like no big deal. I mean, for, for example, I mean, I can get as mundane and it's deceptively mundane because I think personally it's a miracle, but the fact that you breathe, the fact that you have vision, You can hear and you have your faculties. You have your senses. You can think, discern. You can contemplate. You can listen to music. You're in a house. You have both your legs, both your arms. So many things to be thankful for. May seem mundane. I don't think they're mundane, but we certainly take for granted these things. But now I'm going to transition into us as a nation. We should be thankful as a people, as a nation. So let's look at it. Psalm 106, I'm going to read verse 47. Save us, 
O Lord our God, and gather us from among the heathen, gather us from among the nations, to give thanks unto thy holy name, and to triumph in thy praise. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel for from everlasting to everlasting, and let all the people say, Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Look at what he says. He's going to save us. Save us from all these nations. Save us from all these nations. It's so prophetic. So prophetic is right here in the Psalms. I mean, hey. For the most part, they were under King David. And still about save us from the nations. But now the words are still applicable because we need to be saved from all the nations. We need to be saved from the nations that we find ourselves in. That he's going to gather us together from all the nations. The fact that he has uh, spread us out. Read, you know, read it in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 30. That the nations that he spread us out in, he's going to gather us again. And right here, save us from these nations. Gather us up. Make us a people again. Have you noticed one of the things about it that when we look at a lot of other nations, that one, they have a nation. They have a country. They have a land to call their own. What about you and I? I mean, sure, we're, we're going to have it. We once had a land to call our own. And we're going to have a land to call our own. But we don't currently have a land to call our own. But the mere fact that the Most High is going to gather his people and put us in our own land and gather us together and give us a new heart instead of a heart of stone to be able to love one another, to be able to love thy neighbor as ourselves instead of having an evil eye towards thy brother as it is pointed out in Deuteronomy 28. See, that's something to be thankful for because you look at the other nations and they seem to be getting along. For the most part, everyone fights, but they get along as a nation. That they love each other, that there's family. What about us? What about Israel? Are we a cohesive unit? Do we come together as a people? As, as a people, for the most part, do we? No. Come together for some nominal reason. We might march here, march, protest there. So, Messiah, on his return, will save us out of all the nations, save us out of the land of heathens. Is that something to look forward to? Is that something to be thankful for? Let's go to the back of the book. Revelation. We're gonna go to Revelation chapter 11. And we're going to read verse 17, 11 and 17. It says, saying, we give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and was and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and has reigned. We give thanks for that. But look, look, look what else. Look what else we have. And the nations were angry. And thy wrath is come in the time of the dead that they should be judged and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, we know who they are, and the saints, that's us, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroyed the earth. Oh, they were angry because he's going to be, he's, gonna, he's coming to make everything right and set everything in order and for that i am thankful look at all the injustices and the atrocities that we suffer right now look at all these things that we have to go through right now 
Don't you want that to be fixed? Because that's, that's going to be fixed. And guess what? No man is going to be able to fix it. It's going to take a Messiah to fix it. Saying, we give thee thanks, O Lord, God Almighty, which art and was and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power, because he's going to be the one to set this in order, and has reigned, he will rule. And the nations were angry. Of course they are. And thy wrath is come. And the time of the day that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and should have destroyed them which destroyed the earth through all their corruption and their pettiness and their greed and their murderings and their evil surmising. All of them that made manifest the evil machinations of their mind. Aren't you going to be thankful when all this is over? When all that's over, all that is over. And we are a real people, not fractured or torn apart by doctrine, jealousy, greed, envy, ego. But when it's truly over and the king of king comes forth and we're not fighting and backbiting and bickering over doctrinal hairs or camps or people trying to be more than they ought. I'm thankful that all of that will one day come to an end. I'm thankful. Let's continue. We're going to go to Psalm 107. Psalm 107. Psalm 107. And I'm going to start at verse 21. So let's read 21 and 22. I repeat. Psalm 107. 21, 22. 21 says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men and let them sacrifice the sacrifices of what thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing everything that i just pointed out to you brothers and sisters we should be thankful for no matter how it sounded because we know how this story ends so that we should be thankful we know how all of this ends so we should Sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. I am declaring his works because I know what he's going to do. I know how this ends. You know too if you've been following along. So I am very thankful for that. We're going to continue our last couple of spots, right? Romans 1. Romans 1. Right? And 21. 1 and 21. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Because they became vain in their foolish imaginations, in their imaginations and foolish heart. But what happened in 22? Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, right? And I'm only taking that part right there just, just, just because when we are not thankful, when we don't have this, the, 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 this right mindset, when we don't have this right attitude, we go astray. And our ego takes over. And we become ungrateful. And I don't want neither you or I to be guilty of that. I don't want you or I to be weighed in a balance and found wanting. So it's incumbent upon me to remind you to always be thankful. 
Let's go to our last place, which is Hebrews. Right? This is our last place, Hebrews chapter 12. And this is where we end, Hebrews chapter 12 and then 28. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. I want to leave you with that verse, brothers and sisters, just so you understand that the most high God that you serve, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, does so much for you and I, has done so much for you and I, to the point that he didn't really have to do anything else, and he still deserves all of our praise, all of our worship, all of our reverence, all of our respect, all of it. He deserves all of it even if he did, has done nothing else. So I'd encourage you to reflect back. Reflect back on everything that he's done. Re re reflect back on any, even the things you may think are mundane. Reflect back on the times where he may have spared you from danger. Re reflect back on the times that he may have saved you from yourself. Be thankful. Be thankful. With that, brothers and sisters, I want to say thank you for joining me on this program. And once again, I'm asking you to like, share, subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. Smash the notification bell. Check the description box below. If you find it in your heart to donate, please feel free to do so in the description box below. And give me four lessons. One month or four lessons. And for those who've been edified by this lesson, search the scriptures and prove all things. Shalom, Israel.